it's about time someone calls out yogurt for the menace that it is. Why don't you tell me someone is loving you? Cause you're my girl. Some say it's no longer true. They're seeing some slick continental do. The movie starts with a mine worker who discovers some kind of white substance coming out of the ground and discovers it's actually quite tasty. Next thing you know, this thing is being marketed as the next new dessert sensation. The Stuff is actually an interesting movie that is a horror satire from the 1980s. And the first time I saw this, I didn't really think of it much as a satire, because satire implies that this is a type of comedy. But then I realized that it really is a comedy when every kind of really dangerous sentence that you can use with this has to be punctuated with the phrase deadly yogurt. Just watch, watch, watch. It's a deadly product that's being sold across America. It's deadly yogurt. It's controlling the minds of everyone that has it. It's deadly yogurt. It's the single greatest threat to this nation ever. It's Activia with an ulterior motive. For world domination. Yeah, that kind of demolished my entire argument, didn't it? So, yeah, there is some kind of comedy to be had in this, and even though it's mostly to do with the fact we are dealing with a bacteriological confection, sounds as disgusting as yogurt actually tastes, it is a fairly strong horror film, and uh, I'll have to admit, an even better satire when you really look at how deep into the market of 80s consumerism this film goes. This is something that tries to show all the aspects that go with, uh, well, the entire industry. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. When the film opens, you're immediately greeted with something even more bizarre than its mixture of genres. It's the fact that there is no filler and no downtime. Now... This works to its benefit and to its detriment. You see, because of this, there's a lot of edits that are very quick and you're not really certain what's going on at first. So it can be confusing and very sudden, but not so much so that you can't put the pieces together once you have enough of them in play. So you gotta stick with it until it gets to a certain point, and then things start falling into place. So, try not to let it lose you right away. And to be honest, I kind of prefer it the way it is, because there are too many films that get boring, but this one barely knows how to slow down, and it is very fitting considering it is talking about consumerism, and most commercials just jump from one product to the next without any transition. So, in that way, it does get you right into the feel of the industry without even having to be blunt about it. Well, except for the blunt editing. And as far as the characters go, Mo Rutherford is one of the more fun characters, second only to my favorite character, Chocolate Chip Charlie. Chocolate Chip Charlie is amazing. And I will talk with him, I'll talk about him in a little bit. But right now, Mo Rutherford is our main character. He is very interesting. He is energetic and unpredictable, yet composed and calculating. He's clunky with his words, but is very charming and pleasant. He's an odd mixture, but he's intentionally making himself look dumber so people underestimate him, making it easier for him to do very covert espionage missions or assignments that are paid for by companies that are probably as corrupt as the ones running the the stuff operations. But well, let's not get too far ahead. As I said, Chocolate Chip Charlie is my favorite character, mostly because he's always introduced as Chocolate Chip Charlie, which makes it easy to remember his name, but also he's a very eccentric character, a former CEO with fists of steel, and is more than willing to use them in combat, as it has come in handy. He is as full of energy as Moe is, and they work together really well. 
I love seeing them play off each other, and it was great having them on screen. Uh, I do have to talk about, since we are mentioning characters, that Jason is a common gripe that people have. Jason plays a bigger role in the beginning of the film, but gradually fades into being just a character in distress. Someone to be used to get out of bad situations, someone who has to be rescued. But I understand his inclusion because with Mo Rutherford, we're getting the corporate spectrum of things, the big picture. With Jason, we're getting the smaller picture, the effects of the stuff in the family setting, the consumer setting. So this was to give us the complete picture of what's going on with this particular product. So, yeah, his role really is diminished by the time Mo finds him, but I really can't complain too much because it did help the film to have him in there. Now, let's talk about the effects, which are now so starting to show their age, because this was made in the 80s, this was all practical effects, and some of them aren't quite holding up as well as they used to, but others are so good that it's really difficult to tell exactly how these effects were pulled off. And they are far more convincing than what we're getting with CGI. So, good on them. But there are some things that I talk about that aren't so good. Some of the decisions are questionable in terms of both character and writing. Because... There are certain things that happen in the film that I just don't understand. Like going out the rear window to a boat that you didn't know was there, as opposed to going out the front door to where you knew your cars were. Or the whole thing involving the storming of the plant. Or having a particular character who is... Well, I don't want to go too much of the spoilers, but let's just say... There's a character that's introduced late who, ah, I might as well say it, he's this military guy who has his own private army in America and owns several radio stations. He is the biggest plot convenience of the entire film, but yet his madness kind of fits with the overall madness of the film. So I guess it's okay, but it still feels like you wrote yourself into a corner. But I have to admit, the whole film is a lot of fun, even with its problems. Which I still have to admit may only be a problem to those that think too much into the film. And it is an excellent satire of cons consumerism and a thorough examination of the food marketing and production industry. And one of the things that has been pointed very clearly in both documentation of 80s the 80s food and drug administration uh, industry and documenting this film is that in the 80s corporations weren't really afraid to market a very dangerous product so long as they could make huge profits and that is exemplified perfectly in this film um uh, uh, despite how elaborate the film's production is there isn't any hidden meaning or symbolism that isn't readily apparent, so you're not going to find anything too deep with this film as far as that goes. Nothing symbolic of God or any kind of foreign culture. It is played very straightforward, but everything that it's talking about, you could substitute the name Stuff for all kinds of different products, and it would still work. So, in that way, it does its job and does it very well. The film finds every facet of the subject to address and covers it very thoroughly, which is the reason why you won't get a sequel or a remake. There's simply no new angles to go to and no new ideas that can really be presented that weren't at least touched upon in this film. And I kind of like that. I like the idea of getting more out of a film story or its universe or its characters, but in the case of the stuff, this is a special little slice of the 80s that was taking a very uncomfortable subject matter that people don't really talk about because it's not as uncomfortable as some things, but it's still very relevant even today. And I like that it's going to be special because 
no one's going to try to duplicate it. No one's going to try to do it again. There's simply no reason to. This did it perfectly and was very, very careful about making sure it didn't leave anything out. So, with that said, it has its problems, but it has a lot of personality that makes it a strong horror film. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that. So, I give it an 8 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.